Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Javier in the Air. Uh, I'm coming to you from inside in a cool place. Um, not that it's cool groovy, that it's cool as in it's not 100 degrees out there. So I think, yeah, it's already 100 degrees out there. So I hope everybody in, in uh, the uh, state of Texas or other areas that are getting this heat wave are staying cool. And uh, we'll get to that here in a minute. Maybe ways of staying cool if you aren't going to be inside. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, some ideas to stay cool anyway, even if you are inside. So, I mean, we want to make sure that our grid stays stays healthy, right? Even though that's helping out the electric companies and, and we're not happy about that. But they're bringing us electricity people so let's not get too mad at them so uh... and also i'll talk a little bit about brownouts because some people don't know what a brownout is uh... in fact i remember being ridiculed a couple years ago because i mentioned that on facebook so i'll get to the heat portion of the show in a minute so real quick on the garden going like gangbusters the loofahs doing very well the melons are doing well the three carrots that i have growing are doing very well uh, even my grass is doing very well. It looks like with the removal of my ash tree, sorry about that ash tree, but the removal of my ash tree has brought about a new age for Javier's backyard. And that age is where I can grow stuff. So um, I'll show you some photos here in a minute. And uh, the loofah, I have three loofah that are going well. One of them I think I killed by inadvertently pruning too much and I think I pruned the actual feeder vine to that loofah uh, it, it's, it's hanging on there but it didn't look good uh, yesterday so I haven't had a chance to look at it today which I will later on this evening so um, but let's uh, let's get to the garden let's get to it people so here's the here's the garden for you okay so here is the one of the loofah now this is called vanilla loofah for obvious reasons this is the one i think is beginning to die because i pruned too much i got a little too excited and i pruned a little bit too much now this one here is actually growing not even growing on uh the grass this is the one that's coming out really good it's really thick now and it's beginning to get a hard skin on the outside it's really cool now this video i wanted to show uh the melon and you see it was it's been hiding in the garden bed all along i think that's really really cool okay so there you have it so now that loofah like i said vanilla loofah um are, are going very well except for that one i think i did prune it too much i got a little too excited so what they tell you to do is to prune it but not to over prune it and sometimes the shock can cause an issue um, so hopefully that does not um, kill it outright but I think it has so uh, but the other one's going really great as of yesterday afternoon I saw it and it looks fantastic so um, and then that that melon is actually growing in the garden bed which I was surprised I didn't see it and I've been looking and I found the other three first and now I found the fourth one that I happened to move the vine more onto the grass so that's why I was surprised the vanilla loofah is doing so well but the watermelons seem to care if you put the vine more in the grass or if it stays in the garden bed so it, it's over that material that that loofah is sitting on is not pliable it's not breathable it's meant to be there around the garden bed and uh, so it doesn't really allow things to grow but once the vine got on the grass for the melons it started growing fantastically so also this um uh that melon that's in the garden bed i believe is going to be yellow on the inside so let's hope for the best again i'm trying to just get them all to grow when they're ready to harvest i will pick them and then i will have a video of me cutting the melons so that we can take a look and see what's inside uh, i'm really looking forward to it i'm hoping it goes well so um, by the way, um, the music, opening music, was entitled Watch Out, Instrumental. So I guess I have a Watch Out, non-instrumental, somewhere in my downloads, but I don't know where it is. <coughs> but I like the instrumental version of it. So uh, there you go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this heat. So if you've, uh, I don't know, been living under a rock or living in Antarctic uh 
are living in Greenland you might have a nice uh, cold uh, area going on but in Texas it's ridiculously hot so um, I have to uh, looks like the brothers coming to visit um, so anyway the um, the heat's been hot unseasonably hot I know it gets hot here in San Antonio but I mean in Austin and Cedar Park area but there is times when the heat is just too much and it comes earlier than expected so here we are in June which I get it it's June already but this past week has been uh, 100 101 103 104 and yesterday didn't it was supposed to reach 105 but it didn't it only got up to 102 uh, now that's the real temperature not the real feel the real feel is an index that with another algorithm that tells you how hot um, something feels as opposed to what the temperature gauge says now for that same weeks it was 103 103 105 uh, 106 I think at one point and then only 103 on Friday so uh, yesterday got as high as 103 104 with the real fill of 106 and today is only 99 right now at uh, 325 p.m. with the real fill of 102 so um, the problem with that is that there's literally no clouds in the sky and from what I can see there's literally no wind so that makes it in a really oppressive heat so yesterday I got out early with the Takashitas we went walking I got home I edged and mowed and trimmed the yards and I was done by 1030 uh, and by 1030 it was already 96 degrees and with the real fill of like 99 I think it was so I was done for the day I didn't step outside again except to take the trash out I didn't do anything else on that so um, so if you're in a, a, a situation where it's you have unbearable heat you need to remember to stay hydrated plenty of uh, not alcohol I almost said alcohol you can have alcohol but alcohol doesn't really hydrate you it dehydrates you so not a good thing even if you have ice in your margarita but if you're out there working you want to stay hydrated uh, unbelievably I know it sounds weird but you probably want to wear uh, a long sleeve shirt or pants um, if you're doing some gardening for example because the sweat uh, actually helps you to cool the body and I know it's it's counterintuitive especially around here but if you notice those long guys and those construction guys they're wearing uh, layers of clothes um, when they're out there doing this kind of work so you need to remember that there's a reason why they're still out there doing that work and that's because they know what they're doing so um, one of the things you need to do is cool cold water but not intense cold uh, sometimes that can shock your system especially if you've been outside a lot uh, for a long period so you want cold water but not super cold water uh, if you're inside whatever cold water you want um, you want to try to keep as much um, uh, of your body as like I said hydrated so you want to try to drink if you're outside you want to try to take stop uh, breaks like every 30 minutes and uh, take a rest so as I'm gardening I'm trying to do it early morning and I get my walks in early morning so I have water with me but I don't have to be super hydrated and then again I do it at the end of the uh, at the end of the e or at the end of the day early evening 7 o'clock 7 30 p.m. I am out there watering misting my garden uh, my cherry stick anything that needs uh, watering so um, I also spray the water up let it come on me as a mist as well and that cool keeps me cool as well so I'm not doing anything too stupid but um, for those of you that have to be out in the middle of the day and this goes for not just on the weekends but during the week as well I have to drive home in uh, this intense heat I have my windows down I've never I almost never use my AC um, no need to I'm acclimated uh, I know some people say oh, you're stupid but I really am and it's not a problem um, I'm hydrated up to the point where I leave for home I get home 30 45 minutes later not a problem so 
so let's let's try to stay as hydrated as possible out there people and um, let's see what we're gonna do next hold on just a second sorry about that uh, I had a solicitor knocking on my door so I don't know um, I think one of the the good things that it came out of uh, during the time of lockdown was the fact that uh, there was no solicitors so um, you know I know a lot of people in this neighborhood so when you tell me a lot of my neighbors are getting this this being I don't know double pane windows uh, siding uh, roofing um, you know even down to getting numbers painted on my driveway uh, first of all one probably not two I know the neighbors around here and nobody's told me lately that they've gotten anything so everything that you're trying to tell me is a lie and three do your uh, research and by the way this isn't an old memory I'm just saying do your research if you tell me that you're from a siding company take a look at my house I have brand new siding on there and a brand new paint job so maybe it would be behoove you to skip the house that has the brand new siding and painting on it um, I have uh, numbers painted on my driveway perhaps you might want to see that before you come up and ask if I really want to have uh, numbers painted on my driveway that they could do it I'm just saying it's good good thing do your research people uh, now the windows okay you got me but again nobody I know in my neighborhood is getting windows right now so you can't tell me that's what you're getting because that's not what you're getting so anyway um, let's do a Zen moment I have something that's a little different than our normal Zen uh, I thought it was interesting um, where I'm parking for my job downtown is in a tower connected to our co uh, to our offices in a tower building and uh, it's interesting because you can tell because of lockdown and because people are still hybrid working uh, you can see how many people are actually coming in the office uh, because sometimes there's a lot of there's a decent amount of cars sometimes no no cars so this Zen moment is brought to you by Friday afternoon uh, downtown Austin have it our truck zen moment um, I was going to have a poem by Jay Anderson in there but I thought it would just be cool to just have it like that so um, trucks looking pretty good I have to say uh, for it being 32 years now that's right 32 years that I've owned that truck and I bought it brand new so looking very very good very good very zen that I keep that um, going so um, now we're going to just go straight into uh, spirit time. So here we go. Oh, yeah. It's spirit time. Haha, <laughs> it's spirit time, everybody. 
Yeah, so today we are having a beer, and I say we because maybe you're having one with me as well. Uh, I got my trusty uh, Last Stand glass out here. Uh, that's Last Stand Brewery, by the way. And today we are going to have something um, I've never had before. Surprise, surprise. But I want to thank the people out at Brutique, especially Scott and Jana, uh, for providing me with beers like this one. Uh, this is called Drippin'. It's a milkshake IPA. I paused for a moment because I was trying to read the top. It said vanilla, creamy, and thick. With the now T-H-I-C-C -C way that people like to spell thick uh, as a slang term. So, drippin'. Drippin'. And here's... See if I can get that. There's the drippin'. Milkshake IPA. Let's see. This is coming from... It is uh, 12 full fluid ounces of vanilla ale brewed by Rough Tail Brewing Company out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, USA. Roughtailbeer.com uh, Design created by Astrobear.com So uh, they have special uh, design work. Here's the um, Rough Tail. There's the Rough Tail Brewing uh, logo. So, uh, like I said, 12 fluid ounces. What is the IPA on this? Uh, you think it would have it with it? It does not. So, I hope everybody is trying to stay cool today. So, um, I know I am, which is why I'll be having this milkshake IPA. So, um, let's open her up and see what we get. Now, I've had a lot of IPAs before. Single, double, triples. Um, you know, a lot of vanilla, not of this. Uh, this is the first time I'll have what they call a milkshake IPA. Let's get it all in here, huh? Get it all here, see if I can get some head in there as well. So, once again, dripping. Hey, I'm dripping. Milkshake IPA, yes, it looks like a melting popsicle. Put that over there. So, now let's see what we get. Definitely the the hoppiness of an IPA. Definitely the the fragrant aroma that you get from it. Well, this tastes like a hazy IPA. I'm not tasting any vanilla. Uh, I'm not tasting any cream, if it's supposed to have cream in there. Uh, it said vanilla creamy thick, with two C's. Yeah, I'm not tasting any vanilla at all. It just tastes like a decent uh, hazy IPA. Uh, not bad. Not bad. It's great for this uh, heat that we got going on here. Not much on the back end. Certainly that, that nice hoppiness on the front end that we get uh, with IPAs. Um, but I'm sorry, Roughtail. I'm not tasting anything that would consider that I would consider it as a milkshake IPA. Uh, so, but it's good. I definitely uh, like it. Uh, it's refreshing. Um, so I think I'm going to actually go with a... I think I'm going to go with six thumbs up. Six thumbs up. So we got six thumbs up here on the Dripping IPA for uh, Rough Tail Brewing, which is out of Oklahoma City, uh, Oklahoma. And once again, if you like the uh, artwork, this is coming from Astro Bear. Uh, Astro Bear? Yeah, Astro Bear. So uh, check it out. Uh, that was Dripping Milkshake IPA. Back to the regular part of the show. Okay, and there you have it, folks. Spirit time with Drippin. So, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Um, I, you know, my my viewers go up and down depending on the the weekend, and I get it. Uh, but I appreciate those that have been watching, uh, watching me for uh, three seasons now. I hope uh, I've imparted a little 
uh, knowledge or useless information or information of some sort. Um, I know times are tough right now, not only financially, but uh, perhaps even emotionally and mentally and politically and internationally and all the LEs that go with it. Um, so uh, I hope I'm able to keep this um, a little bit separate from that and keep a, a good positive tone going. Um, there's tons of places that you can get your inf your news information from, and this is not one of them. So um, I know some people that are going through some grief right now, so I hope they are getting getting some feelings back for that. Uh, grief is always something that is personal. Um, it takes uh, longer to work their way through it uh, for some. For others, they work through it very shortly. Um, and it's all on the individual. So whatever whatever time you need in order to work through your grief, take it. Uh, if that requires you to take some time off, requires you to go and see some, some of your loved ones so that you can be close to them, then do it. Um, you know, I am not a stoic, but I, uh, I am not a full uh, empath either. Uh, I'm somewhere in the middle. And so, you know, my expertise when it comes to dealing with grief is slim to none, but I know I've been there for some people before, and that's all that really counts. So if you're working through something and you need to talk to someone, reach out to them, uh, someone you haven't talked to in a while, someone you talk to all the time, uh, someone that just would make you feel good, bring you a laugh, then do that. Um, it's something we all need to do. Uh, I hope I bring a lot of laugh and humor uh, in my podcast to you and to whoever who's watching it. And so if you uh, like to see me do more, then please reach out to me and let me know. Uh, if you'd like me to interview a company that you work for, specifically if it's a, or specifically if it's a mom and pop location, then let me know. Does not have to be in the Cedar Park Austin area. I can reach out to you via Zoom. As we all know, during uh, COVID, Zoom was our friend. Um, I can reach out to them via any social medium, really. And you can reach me on just about any social medium. So if there's something that you'd like to talk about on here, again, that's not religion or politics, then feel free to reach out to me, and I will get you on the show. I'll have you out on the patio, and we can do out on the patio stuff. Uh, so, um, next couple of weeks, I know we're going into, uh, horrible hotness, some heat, so stay hydrated and stay out of the direct sunlight during the hottest part of the day. So, uh, this has been another episode of Javier in the Air. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if there's something, again, like something you want to see, something you want me to do, uh, or talk about on a subject that you are, uh, particularly fond of or passionate about, let me know. Until then, I'll see everybody again next week. I'll have more garden updates. Hope maybe I can get Farmer James and Zyda on here to talk a little bit about what they're doing, talk about their pickles and their salsa, and uh, maybe I can get um, more stuff. So uh, just keep an eye out, and I'll see you again. Thanks a lot, everybody.